The sun beat down mercilessly on the barren landscape, casting long shadows across the sandy terrain. Rich Greaves stood beside his armored vehicle, eyes scanning the horizon for any signs of trouble. His team had been waiting outside the small desert town for hours, and the heat was starting to take its toll. Remember the job on Arcturus Prime Trevor Willis asked, leaning against the vehicle's reinforced hull, the one with the crazy cultists. Rich nodded, a slight smirk playing on his lips. Hard to forget. Those lunatics nearly took our heads off with their plasma swords. Yeah, but the payoff was worth it. Luis McCarthy chimed in from his position atop the vehicle, where he was tinkering with a malfunctioning sensor array. We ate like kings for a month after that. Nora Grayshield, Rich's second-in-command and wife, emerged from the vehicle's cockpit, her flight suit still on. Speaking of eating, any word from our contact yet? I'm starving. Rich checked his comm device for what felt like the hundredth time that day. Nothing. They're late. The team fell silent, each lost in their own thoughts. It had been three years since their homeworld and the empire they once served had collapsed, undone by corruption and deceit. In the chaos that followed, Rich and his team had managed to escape with a cache of weapons, armor, and equipment, determined to survive in a universe turned upside down. Since then, they had carved out a niche for themselves as soldiers of fortune, taking on jobs that ranged from simple escort missions to full-scale military operations. They had faced down everything from rival mercenary groups to hostile alien races, relying on their skills, experience, and unwavering loyalty to each other to see them through. But the waiting. The waiting was always the hardest part. What do we know about this contact, Nora asked, breaking the silence. Not much Rich admitted. They were referred to us by that merchant we helped out on Novaria. Said they had a job that required our particular set of skills. Trevor snorted. Don't they all? Louis looked up from his work, his youthful face etched with concern. You think it's a trap? Rich considered the question. In their line of work, betrayal was always a risk. They had learned that lesson the hard way more times than he cared to remember. Those could be, he said finally. But we need the work. We're running low on supplies, and the ship needs repairs. Nora laid a hand on his shoulder, her touch reassuring. We've faced worse odds before. Together we can handle anything. Rich met her gaze, drawing strength from the determination he saw there. She was right, of course. They had been through hell together, and they would go through hell again if that's what it took to survive. He was about to reply when his comm device chirped, signaling an incoming message. He glanced down at the screen, his eyes narrowing as he read the text. It's our contact, he said, looking up at his team. They want to meet at the cantina in town. Thirty minutes. Trevor checked his weapon, a grim smile on his face. About damn time. Let's go see what this job is all about. Well, as the team prepared to move out, Rich couldn't shake the feeling that this job would be different from the others. Something in the air, in the way the desert wind whispered across the sand, told him that their lives were about to change once again. But one thing was certain, whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, as they always had. In a universe filled with danger and uncertainty, that was the only thing that mattered. The cantina was a dimly lit, smoke-filled den of iniquity, populated by a mix of humans and aliens from across the galaxy. Rich and his team navigated the crowded space with practiced ease, their eyes constantly moving, assessing potential threats. They found their contact waiting for them at a booth in the back, a cloaked figure whose face was obscured by a low-hanging hood. Rich slid into the seat across from them, while the others took up positions nearby, watching the room. You're late, the contact said, their voice a raspy whisper. Rich shrugged. We had to make sure we weren't followed. You understand. The contact nodded, their hood bobbing slightly. Of course. In your line of work, caution is a necessity. So Rich said, leaning forward, what's the job? The contact reached into their cloak and produced a small holographic projector. They set it on the table and activated it, revealing a three-dimensional map of the surrounding area. There's a canyon, about 20 clicks east of here, the contact said, pointing to a spot on the map. 
It's home to a group of brigands who have been harassing the town, raiding supply caravans and kidnapping civilians for ransom. Rich studied the map, his brow furrowed. Brigands. Sounds like a job for the local authorities. The contact shook their head. The local authorities are useless. They're underfunded, understaffed, and corrupt. They won't do anything to stop the brigands. And that's where we come in, Nora said, crossing her arms. Exactly, the contact replied. I need you to go to the canyon, find the brigands, and eliminate them, permanently. Luis, who had been quietly listening to the conversation, spoke up. What's the catch? Well, the contact hesitated, then sighed. The canyon is home to an old mining complex. The tunnels run deep and are like a maze. The brigands use them to hide and store their stolen goods. Trevor cursed under his breath. A maze of tunnels? That's going to make things a lot more complicated. Rich held up a hand, silencing him. We've dealt with worse. What's the pay? The contact named a figure that made even Rich's eyebrows raise. Half now, half when the job's done. Rich glanced at his team, gauging their reactions. They all nodded almost imperceptibly. All right, he said, turning back to the contact. We're in. The contact reached into their cloak again and produced a data chip. This contains all the information we have on the canyon and the mining complex. Maps, schematics, everything. Rich took the chip and slipped it into his pocket. We'll get started right away. Well, as the team rose to leave, the contact called out after them. One more thing. The brigands. They're not your usual ragtag group of thieves and cutthroats. They're organized, disciplined. Some of them are even ex-military, like you. Rich paused, his hand on the butt of his blaster. Ex-military. The contact nodded. From what we've been able to gather, yes, they're well-trained and well-equipped. They won't go down easy. Well, a slow smile spread across Rich's face. Neither will we. With that, he turned and led his team out of the cantina into the harsh glare of the desert sun. They had a job to do, and like always, they would see it through to the end. But as they made their way back to their vehicle, Rich couldn't shake the feeling that this job would test them in ways they had never been tested before. Ex-military brigands hiding out in a maze of tunnels. It was a recipe for trouble. But trouble was their business, and business was about to pick up. The sun was just beginning to set as Rich and his team approached the canyon, painting the sky in shades of orange and red. They had spent the last few hours studying the maps and schematics provided by their contact, familiarizing themselves with the terrain and the layout of the mining complex. Now, as they stood on the edge of the canyon, looking down into the shadows below, they knew that the real work was about to begin. All right, Rich said, turning to face his team. Here's the plan. We'll split up into two groups, Trevor and Luis. You'll take the west entrance to the tunnels. Nora and I will take the east. We'll work our way towards the center, clearing out any resistance as we go. Trevor nodded, checking his weapon. And if we run into any of these ex-military types, Rich's face hardened. Take them down hard and fast. We can't afford to get bogged down in a prolonged firefight. Luis, who had been studying the schematics on his data pad, looked up. According to these maps, there's a large central chamber deep in the tunnels. It's the most defensible position. If I were the brigands, that's where I'd make my stand. Nora frowned. So we can expect the heaviest resistance there. Well, exactly, Rich said. Which is why we need to move quickly and quietly. The longer we take, the more time they have to prepare. With the plan set, the team began their descent into the canyon. Trevor and Louise took point, their weapons at the ready, while Rich and Nora followed close behind. As they reached the bottom of the canyon, they paused to get their bearings. The entrance to the tunnels loomed before them, a gaping maw of darkness that seemed to swallow the light. I've got a bad feeling about this, Louise muttered, his eyes wide. Rich clapped him on the shoulder. Stay focused. We've been through worse. They entered the tunnels, their footsteps echoing off the rocky walls. The air was cool and damp, a stark contrast to the heat of the desert above. Trevor and Louise peeled off to the west, while Rich and Nora headed east. 
The tunnels were a labyrinth of twists and turns, and even with the maps, it was easy to get disoriented. They had been moving for about ten minutes when they heard the first gunshots. The sound was muffled by the rock, but there was no mistaking the distinctive crack of blaster fire. Rich and Nora exchanged a glance. Looks like Trevor and Louise have made contact, Rich said, his voice low. They quickened their pace, their weapons at the ready. The tunnels began to widen, and soon they found themselves in a larger chamber, with multiple tunnels branching off in different directions. In there, waiting for them, were a dozen armed men, their weapons trained on the entrance. Ambush Nora shouted, diving for cover behind a rocky outcropping. Rich was right behind her, his blaster already firing. The brigands returned fire, the chamber erupting in a cacophony of gunfire and explosions. They were outnumbered and outgunned, but Rich and Nora were no strangers to long odds. They had been fighting side by side for years, and they moved like a well-oiled machine. Rich laid down covering fire while Nora flanked the brigands, picking them off one by one with precise shots. The air grew thick with the smell of ozone and burning flesh. Just as it seemed they might be gaining the upper hand, reinforcements arrived from one of the other tunnels. Heavily armed and armored, they bore down on Rich and Nora's position with relentless determination. We need to fall back, Rich shouted over the din of battle, regroup with Trevor and Louise. But even as he spoke, he knew it was easier said than done. The brigands had them pinned down, and with each passing moment, their chances of escape grew slimmer. Well, as the battle raged on, Rich couldn't help but wonder if this job would be their last. But he pushed the thought aside, focusing instead on the fight at hand. Well, they had a job to do, and they would see it through, no matter the cost. In a universe filled with danger and uncertainty, that was all they could do. The firefight in the chamber was intense, with blaster bolts ricocheting off the rocky walls and the air thick with the acrid smell of smoke. Rich and Nora were holding their own, but the arrival of the heavily armed reinforcements had tipped the scales against them. We can't stay here, Nora shouted, ducking behind cover to reload her blaster. We're too exposed. Rich nodded, his face grim. Fall back to the tunnels. We'll try to lose them in the maze. They began to retreat, laying down covering fire as they went. The brigands pursued, their numbers allowing them to keep up the pressure. Well, as they fled through the twisting tunnels, Rich's calm crackled to life. Boss, you there it was Trevor, his voice strained. We're here, Rich replied, panting heavily as he ran. We ran into some trouble, heavily armed hostiles. We're falling back to regroup. Same here, Trevor said. Louis and I are pinned down in a side tunnel. We could use some backup. Rich cursed under his breath. On our way, hold tight. They changed course, heading towards Trevor and Luis's position. The sound of blaster fire grew louder as they approached, and soon they could see the flashes of light illuminating the tunnel ahead. Trevor and Louise were crouched behind a makeshift barricade of mining equipment, trading shots with a group of brigands who had them cornered. Rich and Nora wasted no time, rushing forward and adding their firepower to the fray. Glad you could make it, Boss Louise called out, a grin on his face despite the dire situation. With the team reunited, they were able to push back against the brigands, forcing them to retreat deeper into the tunnels. But they knew it was only a temporary reprieve. As they paused to catch their breath and reload, Rich pulled out the map of the mining complex. We need to end this, he said, his voice hard. The longer this drags on, the worse our chances get. He pointed to a spot on the map, a large chamber near the center of the complex. Luis, you said this is where they're likely to make their stand, right? Luis nodded. It's the most defensible position. If we can take it, we'll have the high ground. Rich turned to Nora. What do you think? Can we do it? Nora studied the map. Her brow furrowed. It won't be easy. They'll have the advantage of cover in elevated positions. But if we can get in close, catch them off guard. Then we'll have a chance Rich finished. He looked around at his team, his eyes hard. This is it. We take that chamber, we end this. One way or another. They moved out, navigating the tunnels with a renewed sense of purpose. 
They knew they were heading into the heart of the enemy's stronghold, but they were determined to see the mission through. As they approached the central chamber, they could hear the sounds of movement and shouted orders. The brigands were preparing for their arrival. Rich signaled for the team to split up, each taking a different entrance to the chamber. They would hit the brigands from multiple angles, sowing chaos and confusion. As they took up their positions, Rich felt a strange sense of calm wash over him. This was what they were trained for, what they lived for. The heat of battle, the rush of adrenaline, the knowledge that their lives, that their lives depended on their skills and their wits. He looked at his team, saw the determination in their eyes, and knew that whatever happened, they would face it together. On my mark, he said, his voice steady. Three, two, one, mark. They burst into the chamber, blasters firing, and all hell broke loose. The battle for the mining complex had begun, and only one side would emerge victorious. The central chamber was a maelstrom of blaster fire and explosions as Rich and his team stormed in from multiple angles. The brigands, caught off guard by the sudden assault, scrambled to defend their positions. Rich charged forward, his blaster spitting hot plasma as he dodged and weaved through the chaos. He could see Nora on the other side of the chamber, her face a mask of concentration as she picked off targets with ruthless efficiency. Brever and Louis were in the thick of it, their weapons blazing as they pushed towards the center of the room. The brigands were putting up a fierce fight, but the team's training and experience were beginning to tell. Suddenly a blast caught Rich in the shoulder, spinning him around and sending him sprawling to the ground. He rolled behind a piece of mining equipment, his arm numb and his vision blurry. Rich Nora's voice crackled over the comm. Are you all right? I'm hit, he grunted, trying to shake off the pain. But I'll live. Keep pushing. He hauled himself back to his feet, his injured arm hanging uselessly at his side. He switched his blaster to his offhand and rejoined the fray, determined not to let his team down. The fighting was intense, with neither side giving an inch. The brigands were well-trained and well-equipped, just as the contact had warned, but Rich and his team were better. Slowly, inexorably, they began to gain ground, pushing the brigands back towards the far end of the chamber. The enemy's fire began to slacken as their numbers dwindled, and Rich could sense victory within their grasp. And then, just as it seemed the battle was won, a new figure emerged from the shadows. He was tall and broad-shouldered, with a scarred face and cold, calculating eyes. He carried a heavy blaster rifle and wore the insignia of a military officer. Well, Lil, he said, his voice a low growl. What do we have here? A bunch of washed-up mercenaries trying to play hero. Rich stepped forward, his blaster leveled at the man's chest. It's over, he said, his voice hard. Surrender now, and you might just make it out of here alive. The man laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Surrender? To the likes of you? I think not. He raised his rifle and fired, the shot missing Rich's head by inches. The team scattered, seeking cover as the man advanced, his weapon spitting death. I know who you are, he called out, his voice echoing in the chamber. The famous Rich Greaves and his band of misfits. You think you're so special, don't you? But you're just like the rest of us. Soldiers without a cause, fighting for the highest bidder. Rich gritted his teeth, the man's words hitting closer to home than he cared to admit. We're nothing like you, he shouted back. We have honor, a code. You're just a common criminal. The man laughed again. Honor? Code. There's no such thing in this galaxy. There's only survival, and the strong taking what they want from the weak. He advanced, his rifle blazing, and the team was forced to fall back. They were running out of room, running out of options. And then Nora was there, appearing from behind a pile of rubble, her blaster aimed squarely at the man's back. Drop it, she said, her voice cold. It's over. The man stiffened, then slowly lowered his rifle. You think this changes anything he said, his voice a sneer. There will always be others like me, always someone willing to take what they want by force. Maybe Rich said, stepping forward to stand beside Nora. But there will also always be those like us, ready to stop them. The man shook his head, a bitter smile on his face. 
then I suppose we'll just have to see who's left standing in the end, won't we? And with that, he lunged for his rifle, his face a mask of rage. But Rich and Nora were faster. Their blasters fired as one. And the man fell, his body riddled with smoking holes. The chamber fell silent, the only sound the hum of machinery and the heavy breathing of the team. They had won, but at a cost. They were battered, bruised, and bloodied. Their armor scorched and their weapons depleted. But they were alive, and they had completed their mission. The town would be safe, at least for a little while. As they gathered themselves and prepared to leave, Rich couldn't help but wonder about the man's words. Was he right? Were they just soldiers without a cause, fighting for the highest bidder? He looked at his team, saw the loyalty and determination in their eyes, and knew that it wasn't true. They fought for something greater than themselves, for a code of honor that set them apart from the criminals and the mercenaries. They were protectors, guardians of the innocent in a galaxy that needed them more than ever. And as long as there were those who would prey on the weak, they would be there to stop them. It was who they were, and it was what they would always be. Soldiers, yes, but soldiers with a cause, a purpose. And that made all the difference in the universe. The journey back to the town was a somber one, as the weight of the battle and the lives lost hung heavy on the team's minds. They had emerged victorious, but the cost had been high, both physically and emotionally. Rich's shoulder throbbed with every step, a constant reminder of how close he had come to death. But he pushed the pain aside, focusing instead on the task at hand. As they entered the town, they were greeted by a crowd of cheering locals, their faces alight with joy and relief. The news of the brigands' defeat had spread quickly, and the town's people had come out to welcome their saviors. Rich and his team waved and nodded, acknowledging the gratitude, but their hearts weren't in it. They were tired, battered, and in need of rest and healing. They made their way to the contact's location, a small, nondescript building on the outskirts of town. As they entered, the contact emerged from the shadows, their face hidden beneath a hood. It's done, Rich said, his voice weary. The brigands are dead, and the town is safe. The contact nodded, reaching into their cloak and withdrawing a small pouch. They tossed it to Rich, who caught it with his good hand. Hold your payment. As agreed, the contact said, their voice a raspy whisper. You have done well. Rich opened the pouch, his eyes widening at the sight of the gleaming credits within. It was a substantial sum, enough to keep the team going for months. But as he looked at the money, he couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The man's words from the battle still echoed in his mind, taunting him with doubts and questions. Tell me something, he said, looking up at the contact. The brigand's leader, he said, there would always be others like him, that there would always be those willing to take what they want by force. Is he right? The contact was silent for a long moment, then sighed. In a galaxy as vast and lawless as ours, there will always be those who prey on the weak. It is an unfortunate truth, but a truth nonetheless. Rich nodded, his face grim. And what about us? Are we just fighting a losing battle, trying to stem the tide of violence and chaos? The contact shook their head. No, you are not. You and your team, you are a beacon of hope in a dark galaxy. You show that there are still those willing to stand up for what is right, to protect the innocent and defend the weak. Rich looked at his team, saw the determination and resolve in their eyes and knew that the contact was right. They were more than just soldiers, more than just mercenaries. They were guardians, protectors of the light in a galaxy consumed by darkness. And as long as they stood together, as long as they held true to their code and their honor, they would never be defeated. Thank you, Rich said, his voice thick with emotion. For the payment, and for the reminder of why we do what we do. The contact nodded, then turned to leave. Until the next time, Rich grieves. May the stars guide your path. As the team left the building and headed back to their ship, Rich couldn't help but feel a sense of renewed purpose. The battle had been hard, and the losses had been heavy, but they had made a difference. They had saved lives, protected the innocent, and struck a blow against the forces of darkness. And as long as there were those in need of their help, they would continue to do so, no matter the cost. 
For they were soldiers, yes, but soldiers with a cause, a purpose, and in a galaxy filled with danger and uncertainty, that was the most important thing of all. As they boarded their ship and prepared to depart, Rich looked out at the stars, a small smile on his face. The galaxy was vast and dangerous, but as long as he had his team, as long as they stood together, they could face anything. And that was a comforting thought indeed. The team sat in the common room of their ship, nursing their wounds and their drinks. They had left the desert planet behind, the memories of the battle still fresh in their minds. Rich sat at the head of the table, his injured arm in a sling, his face pensive. We did good back there, he said, looking around at his team. But it was too close. We need to be better, faster, stronger. Nora nodded, her face grim. We're not getting any younger, Rich, and the galaxy's not getting any safer. We need to start thinking about the future. Luis looked up from his data pad, his eyebrows raised. What do you mean? Like retirement? Trevor snorted. Retirement? In our line of work, we'll be lucky if we live long enough to see gray hair. Rich shook his head. No, not retirement. But Nora's right. We need to start thinking long term. Building something that will last, something that will make a difference. He leaned forward, his eyes intense. I've been thinking, what if we used our skills, our resources, to start a new kind of organization, one dedicated to helping those in need, to fighting injustice and corruption wherever we find it? Nora's eyes widened. You mean like a mercenary company with a conscience? Rich nodded. Exactly. We've seen firsthand how much suffering there is in the galaxy, how many people are in need of help. What if we could be that help? Luis frowned. But how would we fund something like that? Mercenary work isn't exactly known for its steady paychecks. Rich smiled. That's where our reputation comes in. We're known throughout the galaxy as the best of the best. If we put the word out that we're looking for clients, but only those with a just cause, I'm betting we'd have no shortage of work. Trevor leaned back in his chair, a slow grin spreading across his face. I like it. A chance to put our skills to good use and still get paid? Count me in. Nora nodded, her eyes shining. Me too. It's time we started fighting for something bigger than just ourselves. Louise hesitated, then sighed. All right, I'm in too, but I'm going to need a bigger budget for equipment. If we're going to be the galaxy's protectors, we're going to need the best gear credits can buy. Rich clapped him on the shoulder, wincing as the movement jostled his injured arm. You'll have it. Whatever you need, we'll make it happen. He looked around at his team, his family, and felt a swell of pride. They had been through so much together, had faced death and darkness and come out stronger for it. And now they were embarking on a new chapter in their lives, one that would test them in ways they had never been tested before but he knew that together they could face anything. All right, he said, his voice filled with determination. Let's get to work. We have a galaxy to save. Well, as the team dispersed to their various tasks, Rich couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. The future was uncertain, but it was also filled with possibility. They were no longer just soldiers, no longer just mercenaries. They were something more, something greater. They were the guardians of the galaxy, the protectors of the innocent. And as long as they stood together, as long as they held true to their code and their honor, they would never be defeated. The stars stretched out before them, a vast expanse of wonder and danger. And as their ship hurtled through the void, Rich knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them head on, together. For they were a team, a family. And in a galaxy filled with darkness, that was the most powerful thing of all. I hope you enjoyed this installment in the Remnant Angels series. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe too. Keep an eye out for the next video in this series.